video will present a paper from Google AI Research on making generative adversarial networks work with fewer labels. So for a quick re recap, generative adversarial networks take in random noise and then produce images such that they can generate novel data points. This works by being trained against a, another deep neural network, a discriminator, which classifies samples as real or fake, and then this process iterates until eventually the generator can construct brand new uh, images from the data set. So the problem is that state-of-the-art GANs require labels. It's a supervised learning technique, and this started with the conditional generative adversarial networks, where you took a one-hot encoded class vector and embedded it with the uh, generated image or the real image on the discriminator, and then with the latent code on the generator. So the key idea in the presentation in this video is that this technique is able to match the big GAN, which is the state-of-the-art on generating images on ImageNet, with just 10% of the labels and then it can outperform this technique using 20% of the labels. And this is super important because in the wild, there is tons of data on things like Instagram, uh, Google Images, and YouTube, and it's really impossible to scale up labeling these data sets for the future of uh, representation, learning, generation, and computer vision. So these, this presents the overall results from the different techniques they test. And this vertical bar indicates the state of the art using labels. So we're going to focus primarily on these uh, S2 GAN and non techniques and discuss and S3 GAN and discuss how this works. So again, these are some of the generated. This is from the technique, the S3 GAN, and this is from the big GAN. So again, it, these are both 128 by 128 image net generated samples. So the inspiration is self-supervised GAN, and this is a paper that stabilized the training of generative adversarial networks by forcing the discriminant, by uh, taking these images and then rotating them 90 degrees, 180, 270, or not at all. And then having the discriminator predict, predict the uh, rotation, like how much was the image rotated. And this technique is gaining enormous popularity. It's known as self-supervised learning. And it's really like an unsupervised learning thing, but it's sort of denoted this way because the task sort of lends itself to being modified in this way for representation learning. So in uh, images, it's done typically through rotations, uh, predicting the permutations of like a jigsaw puzzle by cropping out patches. And then in language, it's way more popular in language. In language, it's when you take like the, some word in a sentence and then you predict the context. So self-supervised learning is really, really popular in language models and it's becoming much more popular in image models as well. So here's the idea. You're going to combine self-supervised learning with GANs. So one way of doing this might be to have a, so you want to have your class label Y that you can embed in the discriminator and the generator, and this will result in a much better uh, GAN. This has been shown that adding labels to GANs really, really improves them. So one way of doing this might be to take the image and then train the self-supervised model to predict rotations and then use these features to cluster the images into classes. So use like k-means clustering to form like 50 auxiliary classes based on the features learned from this self-supervised learning task. So another idea would be to, if you already have the Y labels, is just to regularize the discriminator's features with requiring the discriminator to also predict the uh, rotation loss. This is what is done in uh, self-supervised uh, GANs. So here's another idea is semi-supervised learning. So I'm sorry the terminology is so similar, but semi-supervised learning isn't the same as self-supervised. Semi-supervised is this idea of you have some labeled data in your data set. So let's say you have your 100% data samples, you have 10% are labeled. So one way of using semi-supervised semi learning with GANs is you have the discriminator's features are used to predict the class label of the uh, either real image or the image that comes from the generator. So you would, you, you would train this classifier that is also using, sharing these same features that classify the images real or fake in the first place and use this to derive the label. And then you would have a loss for the samples that are labeled. So for the 10% of uh, images that are labeled, you would have some feedback for this uh, part of the network. So here's the idea of, the, of this paper. You're going to combine the idea of predicting the class with the discriminator features and then you're also going to regularize the features by having it predict this rotation loss. So the discriminator is regularized with the self-supervision term. It's still predicting real or fake. And then it's going to predict the class label and then embed that class label into the conditioning layer. 
So overall, combining these uh, three different loss function makes up this kind of thing. This section here is the normal GAN part. Uh, I mean, yeah, generally, like, you can see how it's uh, a pretty complex thing, but overall, it, it, uh, it works out in this way. So these are the results using uh, different percentages of labeled data. So uh, it goes 5%, 10%, and then uh, the FID, met these are like two metrics of evaluating uh, generated images on, frequently used on ImageNet and to compare GANs in the literature. So you see that um, it doesn't really look like it saturates too much, and the FID score it definitely saturates, but the inception score seems to still have a bit of a big improvement. It's almost five whole uh, points higher. So again, this is the bar chart that shows how the this technique improves as you uh, add more labeled data to the semi-supervised learning component of it. So remember, you have the self-supervised rotation prediction that is like uh, normalizing the discriminatory features. And then you have this semi-supervised learning part, which is uh, used to predict the class conditional embedding in the uh, discriminator model. So these are some of the results from the model two showing that the latent space interpolation works well. And then this is uh, when they scale it up for a 256 by 256 target output. So some concluding thoughts, it's really interesting to see uh, semi-supervised learning and GANs being merged together. And it also would be really cool to see this technique that was uh, presented uh, pretty recently as well, where they uh, normalize, they have the data that's unlabeled, and then they augment it using uh, like rotations and whatnot. And they try to make sure that these uh, class predictions are similar to each other. So it'd be interesting to see, you know, add a fourth loss to this network as well. So thanks for watching this video on making generative adversarial networks work with fewer lab uh, labels. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning videos.